Hello everyone, welcome to another podcast. And I have with me Miss Amanda. Hello. The one and beautiful and awesome <laughs> girlfriend, Miss Amanda. Oh, I said it. <laughs> I'm like still official. Yep, Our yep. secret's out. Exactly, it's out in the world. So I became 20. Jeez, I'm even forgetting this days. 27. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting there. So, there's just a little bit of things I learned. I call it. Like, I was gonna call like this session like my sage, or wisdom, or I don't know. It's like old person having an advice for younger generation or for just people out there. So it's old. like your quotes from life or your sage of wisdom that you can give. So one of the things I came up with was. Number one is you need the Holy Spirit for like marriage, relationship, work, just your everyday life. Like the world has become complex. We're filled with a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So we need the Holy Spirit more than ever before. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? That's good. Completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. By his strength alone, Mm -hmm. do we do? Yeah, we need the Holy Spirit more to also like help us, um, you know, pick the right information. Like everyone is having different kinds of information on how you can live your life. Mm. The church, the school, work, pastors, friends, older people keep telling us like this and that and this and that about um, about life. So just a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit just tells you like, no. Like, I always also feel like our life, by God, He has a plan for each and different person. So each person is special. Mm-hmm. So each person needs to know what God has for them. And just not, there's no manual for everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. if yeah, for every product out there, there's like a manual for that product. Mm-hmm. But for each one of us, probably a manual is the Bible, but God just has a design for each person to fulfill a different kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He made us each uniquely, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Amen. And if we don't seek out that wisdom from our ultimate teacher, then, I mean, we'd be following idols if we listened to everyone else. Exactly. That's good. Exactly. That's it. Mm-hmm. So, well, the one I just found that, no, I want to see if, I was going to talk more about this one in a different way, but. It says the world has become a scary place to live in. Hmm. All I see is rainbows and butterflies. (laughs) What do you see? Yeah, the world has become scary. Like, it's just growing up, you know, when you become an adult, you just, adult in every day becomes you're more aware. It's not a fairy tale world, like being sheltered for your parents and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you become real, like, wow, all that happens. Mm And you just have to live with it. Yeah. Which is like, and with, and with your line of like work and stuff, I mean, you see stuff and things like that. Mm-hmm. She's just an awesome social worker, by the way. He has no idea what kind of social worker I am at the record state, but he's sweet. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. <laughs> so, yeah, she's an awesome social worker and stuff like that. So, you've seen a lot of, quite a number of stuff. And I know one time you explained how the grace of God helps you move on and not get so attached in. Mm-hmm. different situations which is so amazing that's amazing yeah mm-hmm. I thank God for it very much yeah so like the world has become like a scary place to live in so this is her first time so just give her grace please all of the grace <laughs> <laughs> so like um, the world has become a scary place so it's just knowing that sometimes it's more like Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, like falling back to God and know that hey God has the best interest for us at heart Mm -hmm. no matter how scary things we see or feel we should just know God is in control Mm -hmm. we should not let things feel like evil is taking preeminence and there's no good in the world Mm -hmm. there's hope in that there's a lot of um, respite in it too when we get um, too weary Mm -hmm. awesome so another pointer that I think I survived 26 or my most of my adulthood is listening to sermons. 
Oh, really? I didn't notice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I listened to quite a number of sermons. I'm joking. <laughs> I've noticed. I've listened to many of them, which is it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, um, listening to sermons is like, I always feel building from the wisdom of other pastors is like super cool. Like from the experience, how they lived the life of the faith walk. They walk, the faith walk with experience of like holding to God and knowing, especially like I like people like T.D. Jakes who always talks about life and how just holding to God during hard times, mm. at the end of the day, you come out strong. It's just so good. He makes use of all of it. I know. Sure. I know. So it's like listening to sermons is like, do, or doing the faith walk mm-hmm. and listening to sermons is like being on the edge of a cliff and you have to make each step. Once you're at the edge of a cliff and you have to jump off, that means there's, you have to figure out each step to keep on moving. So your faith is like you're not moved by, what's the word again? You're not moved by sight or by, you're not moved by things you, s- you see. You don't walk by sight, you walk by faith. Oh yeah, you don't walk, okay, yeah. You don't walk by sight, you walk by faith. Mm-hmm. So the faith walk is like trusting in God's favor and grace and you're like, you know, it's like jumping off this table and every step you make. By faith. It's by faith. Mm-hmm. And it's the word of God by pastors. It's like so good. So I love mm-hmm. sermons. Mm-hmm. That's it's really good. good. Do you have any favorite preacher? No. Honestly, I don't listen to sermon. I don't seek them out outside of my church. It's cool. It's okay. I mean, you can judge me, but <laughs> judge me that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, but we started, which one did we listen to the other day? When we were driving to... That was a long day ago. Yeah, but that was one, we listened to like a couple sermons there. Um, was that when we went to Holy Hill? Yeah, Holy Hill. Yeah. I don't remember their names, but they were really good. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed them. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just listened to them here and there. So there's another one I found. We are a mystery. We as humans are like mysteries. So in the sense of when we are made in the image of God, God is a mystery, so he made us as well as a mystery. Mm. In a sense of like, there's so many things I just knew about myself that I never knew that was about me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm growing to know those things. Like I know that I need self-discipline on my time. Like I push things off or procrastinate, which I know. <laughs> I procrastinate, <laughs> pro- procrastinate about certain things. Oh, I need to be cleaner and more organized. Oh, really? Shocker. I know. I know. I need to work on that. So, You're doing great. Um, what other thing? Communication skills. I've been. I think I'm doing better in my communication skills. I second that. <laughs> mhm. <laughs> I appreciate that. So I think I'm doing better with my communication skills. But so like the minute we are a mystery is like I'm figuring out myself and more. So hmm. we are a mystery is more like we don't really know who we fully are, mm-hmm. but we unravel ourselves and get a better grip of ourselves as we walk with God as well too. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to understand yourself and walk with God and be like, oh, this is this about me and this is this about me. Mm-hmm. And you become, you begin to realize that you're not like everyone else. Like, you're not normal. Mm-hmm. And no one is normal. Like, mm-hmm. we tend to think everyone is normal. Like, right. or I'm not like normal people. Then we begin to be afraid of ourselves or try to figure out ourselves in a certain way or define ourselves in a certain way. And sometimes we find sin, too. In Sometimes. ourselves, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we need to, like, as we walk with God, we find a road of redemption. And, like, you know, but once we begin to find ourselves without God, it's like, is that a sin? Or I should just accept that as a fact of me? Mm-hmm. Or is that something I need to change? And we don't change that part of ourselves. So mm-hmm. that's really sad. But walking with God helps the mystery that we unravel in ourselves. Helps us put a blend to it, like, mm-hmm. put a right mix to it helps us know that God is using every single part of us mm. and whatever is crazy or not normal God just has a way of like you know getting us back in 
a routine. I'm like, bro, it's okay. You're not losing your mind. I made you like that. Just mm -hmm. trust me. It's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. So, basically, and I think one last one. So, what do you have to say on that? The mystery part. Well, we're already such a big package to unwrap. And then God is always... He's not letting us be stuck in the patterns of this world, but he's transforming us by the renewing of our mind. So mm -hmm. we're changing every day, mm -hmm. and we have to keep up with that. And if we are pursuing this mystery that of how we're made, and I had a mentor once who who taught me that when we submit to God, we give him the control, but then he often gives that back to us. And when we seek knowing ourselves more, we know more about God, which makes sense because we are his temple where mm -hmm. he resides. And so uh, we are one, really. It's a beautiful thing. And like you said, he's, he's a mystery, and his love for us is a mystery. So Amen. I think it's just more about the journey than arriving. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo yeah. It's been a good year for you to mm -hmm. dive into the deep end with that. I know, it's crazy. So, um, okay, this is one quote I got. I'll read, I have to read it. Does It's just my new me scribbling notes. So, w before. Oh, boy. I'm not taking offense. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing about black people. <laughs> wait, wait. I'll, I'll, t I'll, t I'll, say, I'll talk about the first two. I mean, the, I think towards the end of this is going to be interesting. So the middle one says, you know, when you're dating, mm -hmm. when you're, no, there's two things. When you're intentional about your single life and you're like, I'm not dating anybody. I'm not interested in anybody. Mm -hmm. People find out that that is when... You People are attracted to you the People most. People are attracted to you yeah, the most. You didn't see this new girl episode yet, did you? Because <laughs> there's a whole theory around this. <laughs> and there's another thing of when you're in a relationship, too. Uh -huh. uh, People are attracted to you to the most, too. Yeah, I haven't told you this, but this has happened to me a lot in the last couple months. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's really weird. So well, the, this, is the, this is my theory behind it. I feel people are more... When you're intentional and when you're in a relationship, we tend to be have I technically just common sense. We tend to treat people with common sense. Like, for instance, I'm intentional single. I go somewhere and I'm like, hey, beautiful girl, how you doing? That shirt really looks good on you. That and that. And I walk away. But I'm single and searching and I walk in somewhere and I'm like, Trying to get the pickup line, trying to find, make sure I say the right thing. Try, you know, she can even feel it. Like you, you feel the butterflies. You feel like you don't treat people. You don't see people as human. You begin to see them as, oh, we look too good together. It will be romantic together. Or we begin to just have all these emotions and all these things, and we don't just like have this casual talk. Like, yo, oh, what's up, girl? What's up, boy? How you doing? Like, we don't treat each comment like as it comes. Like. We don't treat these situations as it is. We overthink things. Like we are, hmm. that, okay. that's like my theory to it. Like we don't know, we are like so, we just put a lot to it. Oh, interesting. Then when you're in a relationship, it's so easy. So you're more relaxed. You're more relaxed. Okay. Like you're like, hey, how you doing? No, no, no. That's good. You want to talk with someone, you're comfortable with it. You're not thinking, you, the, quick, the first thing in your mind is not, is he interested in me? Or she, is she interested in me? Like, you just treat it as a comment. Like, if someone should say, like, I'm intentionally single or I'm in a relationship and someone says, oh, you have a great sport coat. I like your sport coat. You know, I'll be like, oh, that's, oh, thank you. And I walk away. But I'm single and searching. Just that extra smile alone. That extra smile of someone just look at me like, oh, she really likes me. I should get her phone number. How are you doing? <laughs> That's his pickup line, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, how you doing? You know that kind of a thing? You, you begin to be conscious of yourself. You're like always conscious. You're not relaxed. So and mm -hmm. You're like always putting second thoughts to everything. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe that person likes me. Or oh, hope she, you know, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Someone does something to you on online or whatever, and you're like, oh, that person likes me. 
And the person was just not doing anything at all. Hmm. So it's more attractive when you're relaxed. Yeah, it's more attractive for also the other person. So the person is more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So that's yeah. my that's my basic theory about around it. Makes sense. Sure. And like people who are like single and searching, they're always like, oh, did you text back? What did she say? You're always reading second thoughts to text message. Mm -hmm. Or how quick do you reply? But if it's just basic friendship and you're like treating it as normal, you're like, you don't care. You mm -hmm. text her back, she texts her back. There's a confidence that comes in feeling secure or relaxed too. I wonder too sometimes if you're... Oh, I shouldn't. This doesn't really. I don't know how loosely this relates to your point, but I wonder if um, if it's a good, healthy relationship if you're attacked by evil for being in it. Hence, you get a lot of different anxieties or you have a lot of new people enter your life or show interest in you and it's... Or you think it's like some kind of an attack Could to be spiritual warfare type of thing. Yeah, it's it's obviously it's kind of a spiritual warfare. Like, yeah, I had to. It's like building into a relationship, which is something I didn't even tell you too, but I had to see myself from. How do I put it? Make myself not available. I just like try to start doing that, or for like. You had to tell your other girlfriends. You had to break <laughs> my other girlfriends. No, it was more like there, there was this thing that I had to go to. It happened a while ago. It was just happened. It was a quick thing, but it was this thing that like I usually go to, whereby I'll be available to talk to certain people, or sort of. And it was just mostly like girls and all that kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, some other person can handle it. I don't need to be here. So just avoid any kind of warfare or whatever it is. Hmm. Like, yeah, I understand what you wise. mean, like spiritual warfare too. Mm. So like there's like you're in a relationship and the devil knows mm. when someone's in a good holistic Christian relationship or whatever it is, mm. it's better to just break that down. Mm. Yeah. yeah, steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Terrible. So, more snacks. Okay. Before we go to the last one, well, I don't know if this is a relevant point. This is my theory. I was saying something about, I was talking to my friend, I said, back in the day, Hollywood used to have good stuff. Like, all the Disney stuff are, like, legit. Everything, they're just recycling everything. They're rebooting the movies, they're doing that. This was my theory. I just felt like, back in the day, there was a little bit more Christian culture. That so, makes sense. So, like, the Spirit of God was around and giving people wisdom. And now, the atmosphere is so filtered and polluted like the gospel has reduced so the spirit of inspiration and giving people ideas to write good stuff is like thinning out mm. and people are just rebooting you know like being creative oh that's so interesting that you see that on a mass level yeah and in hollywood yeah that could be a fruit of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, of that restriction yeah and my last one so i was like white people look alike i know this is sad this is really sad, but so I come from a country where everybody looked alike. Mm -hmm. It was like I told you that I've had the same experience, but backwards. But let me I tell you what happened. Let me tell you just a white neighborhood. Let me tell you what happened on my trip. So I didn't even tell you this to Texas. Yeah. So when I was driving from Missouri, I stopped where I stopped to get my briskets. Biscuits. No briskets or bris. How'd you guys pronounce it? <laughs> Not barbecue. It's the barbecue brisket or oh beef brisket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So, I stopped in this lead, and I think you know when they say, "You get what you deserve," like what you give, you get, or what's that thing? What goes around comes around. Yeah. So I always thought white people look alike. Like remember, one time I told you I went somewhere, and I th saw the person change her clothes. And when I looked at the person, I thought the person was you, and I was like, hey, oh my oh, goodness. that's right. And then you showed, you showed me a picture, didn't you? No, no, I didn't show you the picture of the person, but like, I thought, I told the person like, hey, how you doing? Oh my goodness, you look so good. 
Oh, this was at work. Yeah, this I know. This wasn't in Texas. No, 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 I was going to so go back. you're going back to I'm going back to, okay. I'm building on the, okay. what goes around comes around. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have I'm treated a lot of white people, making them, <laughs> uh, let's say for instance, I see a David and I treat a Tom like it was David because I thought they looked alike. And I bring up the experience we had. Like for instance, if David's father died and I meet a Tom that looks like David, I'm like, hey man, how did your father pass away? And, and the guy would look at me like, what? Because they kind of look alike to me. I know. So I've been doing it back, doing it back and forth, and we just started dating. And I thought another girl looked like her. I'm so sorry. I forgive you. Thank you. That's fine. So I asked. I was like, not asked the girl. I was like, oh my gosh, you look so cute. And the girl was like, thank you. And she was flustered and like <laughs> blushing. I'm like, and I froze right away because mm. I knew she was not the one. Then I walked away from that one, but it was all right. So I went to this place in Missouri on my way to Texas. So I went through Missouri. There was this place called Cuba. I pulled over. I saw this big sign that they had barbecue ribs. So I pulled over to sit down and eat. Then this couple just kept staring at me. They just kept staring. And I was like, what is going on here? Then the husband came over and was like, sir, um, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Wisconsin. Da, da. He says, uh, we fostered a child. Is it fostered or adopted? It was one of them. We fostered or adopted a child. He's half-brother. Like, you look exactly like the child we adopted. The kid looked like Wesley Snipes with corn roses. Wesley Snipes is so much darker than I am. <laughs> so, um, the On behalf of all white people, I am sorry. <laughs> so I just feel like what goes around comes around. I did it to myself. So... <laughs> So I mean, I have the same experience. I mean, when you're thrown in a different culture, when you don't have that diversity, um, that's I think that's a common struggle when mm-hmm. you when if and when you can get out of that. I had mm-hmm. the same experience. <laughs> so yeah, so it's he pulled up dumb. the phone, like, dude, I'm like, I know people look alike, but I mean, this is your foster child. How do you think that child looks like me? Not a bad point. <laughs> not a bad point that's, I'm like you that's saw this rough. kid every single day yeah. but it was like no what this is what they were looking for they were looking for the half brother but he said that he no he did, did not he mix say you looked like the the half brother or I look like the kid or the kid. so they were thinking I was probably his half brother so they did all that so 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 this is what this is another stereotype about Amer- it's not just white people Americans what do you think of Africa so they just think it's one big village or there's a village life there and everyone is adopted and brought here or something <laughs> weird like that. <laughs> so You're so sad. It's because we never leave. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. So she, um, what, what happened? So he was asking, like, so I, I literally told him I was from Ni- Africa, like Nigeria, Lagos, Africa. Then he probably was now, probably, I don't know if he was trying to put two and two together to make sure I was not the half brother. Because I'm sure he's, he would have felt like a light bulb go off, like, oh my goodness, you're all the way from Africa. Maybe they adopt, I don't know, maybe you're his half brother somewhere. And I'm like, look, chill, bro. My brother, I know my family. So, like, I have a family. And it's a real family, like mother, father, and kids. Like my brother is a lawyer. My other brother is going to college. Oh, he's a lawyer. That's so cool. Yeah, I showed his picture. I didn't. I don't remember that part. Oh yeah, Sorry. my brother is a lawyer. Okay. My other brother is trying to go to college. I know my dad. I know my mom. I'm like, bro, I ain't adopted. <laughs> like, I don't have any bro, other brothers. there's no way that it's is gonna happen. Us. So take that thing and go away <laughs> with it. So yeah. So, but other than that, it was it was cool. But I just felt like what goes around. Did he say like, oh, um, were you like adopted, or did he? Did he? Give he you was gonna give me that kind of clip, but I was like, so you already had. I was that trying impression. to, I was trying to explain it down. I'm like, bro, bro, chill, bro. I have <laughs> parents and brothers just like y'all. So I'm like, bro, yeah. chill, chill. Before you start getting your hopes up, like if I was through an adoption agency or I went, no, bro, stop, stop, just stop. Yeah. So, but it was good. I just felt like what goes around comes around. Finally, I got a taste of my own medicine. <laughs> God makes use of all of it, right? And that is it. It's a wrap. Praise ye the Lord. Mm-hmm. Psalm 150.
I just want to say one scripture. I think I've already said about one or two scriptures already. You are the light of the world. I have God has used me to be a light. It's a name I'm getting to be fully aware of because I was not like born with it. And I just started leaving out the name like four or five years ago since I moved to the state. So seeing God do his work with my name is so awesome. I agree. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any last words? We're supposed to do 15 minutes. We're 10 minutes over. So that's what happens when you bring a cute girl to the show. You just go over. You just have to go over. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thanks You're for welcome. all the grace y'all are extending to me. Amen. I don't know where to look. There. No, no, it's just. Right. I don't know. I just look at I'm my face. I'm this bad, y'all. I'm this bad. I just look at my face. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this great day. Thank you for all the things you taught me being 26. Thank you for the guest, Amanda. Thank you for all what you have done. Oh, Lord, and I pray. This gives you all the praise. I mean, all the glory and all the praise return to your name. I pray for all those adulting mm. to as well. Give us the grace and the strength to keep going. Pray that everyone trusts you with your lives and everything works out in the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.